What's going on, everybody? It's still Fantastic Friday. We've got Mike Zuber for one rental at a time. How is it going, Mike? We've had a fun couple first segments already. Yeah, I uh, again, I thoroughly enjoy our conversations. So I think we really are helping people. Uh, yeah. And yeah, people should people should really blow up your channel. I, I don't know. Thank you. you. Know, yeah, Thank Lumberjack you. Landlord is, especially if you're earlier and you're house hacking and, and you're really looking to build wealth and become a millionaire, it's the best spot out there. Yeah, take advice from somebody that's lived the hack. And I lived yeah. it for 15 years. I think I think you need to change the channel name to Ninth Grade Dropout. That's, that's <laughs> you. You would get more followers calling yourself a ninth. Grade I might. Dropout. I might need to. I might need to. And true story. If in case you haven't seen any of my content, first, shame on you. Second, yeah. shame on you again. But third, I am actually a ninth grade dropout. True story. Um, and yeah, we've just been able to find a way to make the magic happen. But in segment number three. What we wanted to talk about was something very cool, very new to me. And quite mm -hmm. frankly, Mike is the one who put this on my radar. This is oh, absolutely nice. credit to, to Mike and to his team and what he does. And so I had never, ever, ever done Section 8 before. Wow. Or voucher program housing. I'd never done it. I still actually haven't signed my first lease yet doing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, that being said, we try very much to have a percentage of our housing that we make sure to help be helping people out with, i.e. Yeah. we're not market rent. We are well below market. You have to have all the qualifications to get in. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a much tighter rental box, right? But if you hit those tighter rental box items, we're willing to give you a unit much lower than market rent. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it was awesome until we just don't do nearly as good of a job as, as the housing authority does. No. We just don't. They do a better job because they have their list of rules. When you mm -hmm. agree to get, or when you get awarded a voucher, mm -hmm. yep. you have to abide by all those rules. And they have far greater teeth than just being evicted. If you get evicted, if you get thrown out, if that goes through the process, you are actually thrown out of the program forever. You never can get back in. Mm -hmm. I think that that's absolutely brilliant because if you've done enough to get thrown out, sorry, you'd sorry, away, especially when somebody's paying your rent. And that's usually the reason you get thrown out. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's paying that percentage of rent, that's what makes sense. So what I wanted to talk about in this segment was really talk about that uh, voucher program, you know, sure. kind of what I understand, what you, the success that you've had with it, because mm -hmm. I know that you have about a third of your portfolio or so correct. Is, is voucher. So yeah, talk correct. me through it. I mean, I, I, we're doing this because of you, because it, <sighs> it's something that we never, never doing before. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'm going to call you back. That's okay. You can call <laughs> me back. Uh, so again, something I want to make clear is, is in my portfolio, 100% of my units are available for section eight program, awesome. right? Uh, Every unit we have can be rented. It's at the price point. That's in fact, it's the market I have focused on my entire 20 year career. Uh, I did that on purpose. Uh, I was, um, I didn't grow up with a lot. It was, you know, housing insecurity, food insecurity, as I've talked about many times was, was a, just was what it was. I still remember those days. So when I had a chance to help, I was going to help and I was going to help in a big way. So in my portfolio existing hundred percent is available, but it's about 35 to 40% give or take year to year. Uh, so a couple of things about the program, because I've been helping people for years talk about it. First and foremost, a lot of people that don't do it, either they have no rentals or they just do cash buyers. Lots of folks uh, have an unnatural bias, either known or unknown, that mm -hmm. they think all housing uh, assistants, folk, tenants are horrible, scum. They just, that's what they think. And nothing could be further from the truth. Agreed. Um, mm -hmm. They are all on hard counts. on both. Counts. Yeah. They're yeah. they're in my experience having literally thousands of them now over two decades is they are, uh, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know if it was a cash tenant or not. They're hardworking. Uh, they may have things going on in their life through no, you know, maybe no fault of their own um, or they're just trying to clean up past sins, whatever it is. Uh, they just need some help. Yeah. And um, that's what the housing authority is for. And I am a huge proponent of it. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, there is an unnatural bias by some folks out there, which I think is unfair. Uh, I don't, I don't know where it comes from, but I've, I've heard it. I've seen it. I've seen it in my comments when I talk about section eight and, you know, shame on you. Uh, in fact, I've had five horrible tenant stories in 20 years. Three of them were cash tenants, two were section eight. Yep. But as you said, all <clears> I can <throat> do to a horrible cash tenant is evict them. And if That's I can it. get a small claims hit to hit their credit, uh, but section eight, 
individual lost access to the program forever, right? There's just a bigger downside, a bigger penalty. Massive downside. Yeah. yeah. So I love the program. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge proponent. Um, I love the fact that there are rules for the tenant and the landlord. Yes. Right. There's rules to get in. And oh, by the way, the one thing that most landlords hate, I love, and it's more because I sell, I don't self-manage. So you're going to, you may get some nitpicky things and, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Sure. You're going to have a, you're going to have a yearly inspection yep. going forward. And it can be as little as a cracked tile. Sure. Uh, a part of a rug in a room is, you know, there's a thread coming up. Yep. Uh, there, there may be some nitpicky stuff. Uh, but realize they are evaluating the tenant as well, right? Uh, most tenant inspections I get back come back clean because again, we're ahead of it, we're managing it, but I see lots of little things all the time and we just say, okay, great. Uh, the second thing is the tenant gets a report, right? If they're not clean or they're, uh, the kitchen is this or kitchen's that or the backyard's this or that, they're gonna get, uh, you know, they're gonna be held to a standard, which I really love, right? That's awesome. I can't, I can't hold a cash tenant to a level, right? They pay the rent, right. they don't. Right. If the inside the house becomes a hoarder house, you know, I guess there are some levels of hoarding that I could probably call out as safety, but cash tenant, I don't have the same kind of rules and certainly not the same kind of teeth. Right. Because again, you get a section eight tenant or housing assistant that's, you know, flagged as dirty. Um, they're going to get on it and clean it because they don't, you know, they're going to like 30 days to fix it. And if they don't, they can, they can lose the program. So lots of things for it. Uh, the hassle factor of a, a on site inspection is a plus for me. Cause again, I pay someone. So I, I basically, see, I see it. I spin it as positive that I get 30% of my portfolio evaluated by independent eyes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I get 30% again, people looking for little things. So if I get a clean report back from section eight, I'm like, good job, property manager, right. You're doing your job. That's so right. I use that 30% uh, to evaluate how they're doing on my other 70%. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a huge thing in California. Uh, I don't think it was always this way, uh, but now I pay for the inspections, which is kind of a hassle. Uh, but again, they're doing a lot of work, right? They build a pretty decent report. Um, so some landlords don't like that because I don't think it, I, I could be wrong, but I think a decade ago, I didn't pay for those, okay. uh, but I pay for them now. Uh, so any idea what, I don't know what, idea what they cost. I know for, I know, I know for us, it's less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. I think it's 50, 50 bucks. bucks. Yeah. I was going to say, think, I think it's like $50. Yeah. yeah. I think it's 50 bucks. Yep. Again, it's, at this point, I don't even look anymore. It's like an no. automatic approval. I'm like, sure. oh, why are you bothering me? I think it's 50 bucks. It might, it actually may have started at 50 and it may have jumped to a hundred this year. Okay. But still for a full detailed report of the inside right. of my house that I, right. again, remember what I do. I use it to evaluate the PM. Um, believe me, those conversations, I, I, I remember one report I got back. I was like, if this is how you're handling all my cash houses, I'm going to go somewhere else. Oh no, 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 no. I'm like, oh yeah, you better believe uh, yeah. we're going to do those things. So now it's really important. I'm a huge fan of the double check. Um, and again, I've had, I've had five horrible stories. Three of them are cash tenants, two are section eight. It does happen. People get addicted to bad things hmm. and, you know, stuff happens, but to, to know that I've supplied, um, you know, now hundreds of, of homes to, to housing. And again, I, if people watch my channel, I put up videos of my remodels. I call them pride of ownership rentals. That's right. Uh, they are, they're nice stuff. So I, I'm, I'm happy that I can provide that for people. So it, it warms the cockles of my heart <laughs> to know that we're doing it a lot like you do it, which is a, we, you know, we're, we're talking to housing authority. We're talking to the inspector. We too, we're using exactly the same product that we use in all of our other houses. We're not Absolutely. differing anything. It's still the same, you know, high end vinyl planks, still yep. the same low E argon gas, you know, uh, yep. you know, energy star plus windows, yep. it's still the marble head casing and it's still the insulated doors and it's still Same the thing. solid core doors. Yes. You know, we're doing all of that stuff to make Good it, for you. like you said, pride of ownership, a nice rental. And quite frankly, just being completely transparent, I hope that we stick with the program for quite some time in the future. And we do nothing but continue to grow our, our portfolio. Um, however, if for some reason we don't, then it's exactly like the rest of my properties. Yeah. There's no exactly. reason it should be discounted. At all. Oh, I to totally agree. So there's two, there really three more things that I just want yeah. to put out there. Why Please. Section 8 is great. First and foremost, in, in many markets, Section 8, some people always argue, is Section 8 the floor or the ceiling? Right. Right. And I've right. been doing this 20 years. There was a time where Section 8 was the floor, meaning cash tenants would just pay more for that configuration. Sure. Section 8 has seen a pretty healthy increase recently and likely will get more funding. I think they're looking for another $5.4 billion. Yep. So in many markets, 
And actually some parts of the market I'm in, not all of them, but some, they're the, they're the ceiling. Interesting. Right. So it's, we're the, it's really, we're the, they're the floor here right yeah. now, right now they're the floor. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to talk about is turnover in a section eight house. This it's not apartments. Apartments are a different story, but section eight housing. If yeah. you ever looked at my portfolio and you saw a tenant there more than 10 years, there's a 90% chance it's a section eight house. Love that. Yeah. They just stay forever. They don't want to move. They don't want to change schools. Sure. Most section eight housing has, has at least one, if not multiple children, once they get in, they, they don't move. And the other thing, realize that we just went through a pandemic where, where we were very nervous about cash tenants. Mm -hmm. I was never nervous about Section 8. What do you do? So, you know, landlord in my position, we look at it and we say, okay, you know, we want to give them some stability. We want some stability as well. Um, Multi-year leases. Do you do anything with a multi-year lease where you just have like, a, you know, it hits the prevailing rate of Section 8 pricing, you know, within 60 days of new pricing being released. Yeah, I have, um, I don't treat anything different in my remodels or my leases. So everybody okay. gets a yearly lease and goes month to month after that. I don't create, I don't want to have, I don't want to add complexity to my life or I gotcha. don't want to have people point at uh, inequalities. I just, yep. I want to remove all of that. So no, I have not done anything like that. More, it was trying to give them something special because, you know, so I went on my very first showing this morning for a yep. voucher tenant. Nice. Um, they're in a three bedroom. They, they need to get into a four bedroom because she's mm. going to be with child soon, uh, with another child soon enough. Yep. And so they wanted to do that escalation. I actually bought this building with her in it. Oh, cool. Um, I bought another building that's only four blocks away from her. So her kids get to stay in the same school system. That's awesome. They get all of the wins that they want to win. But what I found out was, is that she actually has a four bedroom voucher instead of a three bedroom voucher. And this gives her the opportunity to scale up and it gives yeah. somebody else the opportunity that to scale up from a two to a three. And go. so what's really interesting is, is that in the acquisition of these two properties, one was vacant, one was a vacant duplex. One was a duplex that had only one tenant in it. The other unit was empty. What's amazing about this is I believe I'm going to turn, turn that one voucher program tenant. I believe I'm going to turn into four tenants because she has friends on the voucher program that are looking for a two bedroom, which is what the first floor of that other one is. Mm -hmm. And then the housing authority, because they put me in contact with her or with another person saying she's looking for a three. So I think that we're going to be able to fill all four units, all with housing authority voucher programs and housing authorities thrilled because there's no supply and yeah, I was, all I was the just, tenants are getting something filled. I was going to tell you something that's very, not many people realize voucher programs have an end date. They expire. Yeah. And at least in most markets I have heard of, the list of people that have been approved far outlist the, the supply available. It is. And um, if they're going to throw another $5.4 billion, that's only going to get worse. Because yeah. again, it's the whole supply demand equation. They're, they're, fixed, they're, they're increasing demand in a scarce environment. So if, um, you know, if you're out there and you're looking at it, I am a huge fan. I realize there are some unbiased opinions, which I think are unfair. My experience does not validate those concerns, but everybody teach your own. Uh, I am a huge fan. Yeah. I think it's, <clears throat> I think it still comes down, which I, which I also love the process, Mike, that they were also very transparent about. And I think it's, you know, they talked about the fact that they do a criminal background check when they first get on the program. Nice. And then they still allow for you to do whatever checks and balances you have as a landlord, just because they see it, just because they want it doesn't mean they get it they still have to fit your, your rent yeah, box, your buy box. Yeah. Yeah. Or rent so box, yeah. I, so I love that because again, these are all things that, you know, talking to some people that have done it before, quite frankly, if you're a lousy landlord, section eight or voucher program just amplifies that. Yeah. Yeah. It's and and I'm think. glad you brought that up. Cause I have a rent box. Again, I don't look at where the end, I don't look where the rent comes from. It's not important to me. It okay. could be section eight. It could be other charities or it could be cash. I, that, where it comes from, I don't care, right? Yeah. It's it it's not in my box. When right. I'm look, I have other criteria, yeah. And I would say, I don't know what the, I've never looked at this, but I'm sure I declined thirty percent of the applicants that are Section Eight. But it's not because of Section Eight; it's because they didn't hit my my box. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I would I would do one hundred percent of my portfolio Section Eight. That's how it worked out. I'd I'd have no problem. That's awesome. Yeah. And again, guys, this is the type of even for me, an investor, you know. 20 some odd buildings, 70 something units. I still am always looking for data 
always looking to talk to other people, expand the network, have those conversations. It's only going to make you better. If you decide that it's not for you, fine. But largely speaking, the more data input that you have, the more opportunity that you have to capture a hold of something, do something different, save you money, make you money, twist and turn a knob, up and down with a lever, any of these things that are of great value. So Mike, as always, hugely valuable. Any other thoughts on the matter? No, um, I'm, just, I'm just really happy that you're doing this. I'm excited to do it. And like I said, quite frankly, for us, we tried to do it as individuals for years. And we kept on, they are the only when, and they were not voucher program, but they were only people that took advantage of the system. And those mm. are the only nine evictions I have are mm. people that took advantage of the system. And that's out of over 2000 tenant years, we wow. have nine evictions. So our rate is super low. We love working with people. We, we just recognize it is, it's a house, it's a home for them to stay for their family. So I'm thrilled at the opportunity to be able to do it and just looking forward to, uh, um, making sure to catalog the process as we go through it. Cause so far so good. It's been, it's been understandable and they've been very transparent, but That's we'll awesome. just be transparent and going through our process, make sure it's valuable to other folks. So Mike, where can everybody find you? My friend, go to your Google search bar and type in one rental at a time. You should see a book an Instagram, a YouTube channel, all that stuff. And you guys should absolutely be subscribing to one rental at a time. I mean, there's tons of content on there and good content at that. Not like <laughs> some of the abs, like, the amount of content that I watch is somewhat shameful. And sadly, about <laughs> 70% of it is total crap. And you're just like, oh, this guy is completely it's pretty bad. This guy is giving investment advice and he owns zero stock and he owns zero homes. Let me just let me just <laughs> line right that. up to listen to you. Give me a break. Yeah. Cause you can because you can read me oh, an well. article that I can't read for myself. I graduated the ninth grade, not the fifth. Okay. So like <laughs> you know, I can, I can still read. read I can still read articles for myself, everybody, and understand the words. So That's Mike, awesome. thanks so much. Have a great, great long holiday weekend. And guys, Lumberjack Landlord here. Subscribe. Have some fun with us. Lumberjacklandlord.com, Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube. Have a blast with us. And Mike, have an awesome. Are you still doing a Saturday group? Of course. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I will see you there. Everyone have a great holiday weekend and remember what this weekend is about. There are many men and women that fought for us and fought for our freedoms and respect that, respect them. And I, I always think of Edrin. I've literally had some say, it's no problem. I was like, dude, it's a problem and it's, I'm grateful. So yeah. we thank everyone out there for all that they did to make sure that the that America was in fact a free country as it is today. So Mike, thanks so much. Everyone have a great weekend and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everyone.